Okay, were your systems ready? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. yeah, are your systems ready? Yeah, yes. Uh, ready? Moreover, uh, is there anything that you want to discuss? Or any question that you wanted to discuss? Any query, anything new that you have prepared at your end? Any application that you were trying to? Yeah, I'm just trying that at the in that application. I have to scroll down the pages. Scroll down like the what pages? In like uh, text box. Um, suppose um, that box size is something and the um, text are more than that, then it will be scrolled down. Option is there. Likewise. Show me what what do what have you achieved? What have like okay. this here scrolling is there i want that this also i have to put here and after scrolling this page in after that about that then that then that videos will come you want to show me for a video one second problem would i can't see Hello. Hello. Yes. I have to mute you. I don't know what is the problem at your end, but I had to mute you. So you want that scrolling to be available on videos as well? Is that what you're saying? Go unmute yourself or use any another's mic, like use any friend's mic. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm just asking that after that, this context, the means that links will be there. Means that if this video will be, means this video link will be there. Means I have to scroll down this page, then then only I'll get that video option. Right now you're seeing three videos, right? So you want? Yeah. I want to put these videos after that text. In, in inside that text yeah inside the text and after scrolling down the video will become no it's not possible because that's a text input and this is a video input you cannot bring video within the text input okay you cannot do that suppose yeah i'm just asking this suppose i'm choosing the data science in that first page it will come to this page and after yeah. that, uh, I'm just means like this is not here. I want to be that the total page will be this. Means I have to scroll down like this. Like this, how it is scrolling up. I, mm -hmm. I want in that format, in this format. Can it be possible? Mm -hmm. I want to scroll the page. Yeah, I know you want to scroll the page, but that is not, I think, uh, the Power App framework doesn't give us any component that can perform that activity. As of now. Okay, sir. Okay, so it will always be single page where you see everything. Because these applications are targeted for cell phones and uh, 
probably tablets or over we can we can see if uh, tablet scroll test Okay. Insert screen. There is one option which is known as scrollable screen. Scrollable screen. Yeah. You can add that. This one, sir. Yeah, that's right. Then add section, sir. Yeah, go on adding section. Okay, sir, got it. I want this. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure. Okay, any more question from anyone else? Anything they are trying, any any application? So last three classes videos will be not downloaded. So download option is not there. So what to do, sir? How to download? Downloads are not there? <clears throat> no, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let me check with team and let you know. They should be there. They should be there. No, no problem with that. And sir, uh, where we can uh, What happened? Say that again. Hello. I can't hear you. I'm saying, sir, in the week. Guys, is he audible? Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, sir, I'm saying, sir, when uh, we are creating an application, sir, then we can use like if and loop, sir, like yesterday, uh, like Avisek and Rafi Dek uh, use. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get, sir, like when uh, we can use, sir, like if and uh, loop. So we can use if statement anywhere that requires a conditional logic. So I'm sharing my screen. Let me know once it's visible. Yes, sir. It is visible. OK, I will create a blank app. Yesterday's example was to use a conditional logic. For login page. So like insert, then input one button here to log in. Uh, let's call this application.
So I'll name this as login. I'll introduce a text input. Not a label. Text input here. Another one here. All right. One is for enter the password field, enter the username field. Similarly, another is for enter the password. So I'm using now combination of text input and a label. For text input, I don't want any default value, so I remove it. OK, now how would you use if and else logic? There are a lot of ways to use if and else logic. I'm giving you just an example that we had yesterday. We only want to show this button. OK, we want to make this button login visible when they enter any information here. So what should be the logic? If this both is empty, right? Yes, sir. Then make this go visible. So how how is visible property of any button twigged? So you go to the visible property here, and if you change it to false, right, it won't be visible. Yes, sir. Maybe you can keep it true, right? But if you change the display mode property, so display mode from edit to another just just view or disable, you would see that it will grade out. Right, so how can you change the uh, after user enter this information, both of them, then the display modes display modes should change. So you will apply an if logic to it. If you look, apply an if logic, if right, you will say the formula is blank. What is blank? Text input one. Uh, just a moment. What is this? This is text input two. This is text input two underscore one. How do I have text input one? Okay. So you will say properties are very much important. So you would say text input two, right? And and is blank text. Input two underscore one. This become your logic. Remember the if formula. What? How is the if formula? Have you used if formula before? Yes, sir. In Java, sir. Like. Yeah, in Java you have used that, right? So yes, sir. if you know if you have used it, you know that if formula will always required a condition. So yes, the first parameter that you forward in a formula is condition. Right. Yes, sir. And then what what should be the true value and what sh what should happen when the it goes false? For example, if a equals to five, right, then do a plus five. Otherwise, do a minus five. Isn't that the logic? What I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing. I'm applying logic here. I'm using I'm saying that if this is blank, which is true, if this is also blank, then make display mode property dot disabled. Else make display mode to edit. So 
So if I write it here, Vibor, then I write it again, Vibor, then it will be visible. Otherwise, it won't be. Fair enough. Another thing is, as soon as this is visible, I want to have accurate username and password to be entered. So I say that, OK, let's go. Let's go to the. Uh, on select property. As soon as they will select it again, I wanted to use a condition. Which is an if condition if logical test. So if, if you only have one username, right? What you would do is you would say text input dot text input to dot text equals to Vibor and and which is the and logic text input to underscore one dot text right this should be equal to any password that you enter what do you want to do? You want to maybe say login successful. So you would say notify. Login success or else you will no notify. Invalid username or password. So now when I enter my name, but now when I enter one, two, three here and I click on login, it will say invalid username or password. I say one, two, three, four, five. It will say login success. So you can think of other options that can be done, such as moving it to another screen or doing doing other activities as well, which can which, which are left for you to brainstorm. I hope this gives you an idea about how this can be used. Yes, sir. If others have any other qu questions and queries that are coming up after this exercise, please let me know. Sir, uh, I want to share uh, my screen. This type of uh, I have done something. I want to share. You want to share? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sir, here what you have told user ID and password that thing, but uh, it's not visible. Is it visible to anyone? Not yes, now I can see it. Sir, here uh, what you have told user ID and password uh, if that is matched. Not seen, sir. Have you seen? Uh, I can see teams teams right now. Go to your power apps. Okay, 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 sir. Now? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Uh, what you have told the user ID and password that thing, if it is matched, then it will be navigate and user ID password that is fixed uh, in the condition you have told. But yes. uh, what I want that uh, 
there is no user id and password fix for the user user should take it from the sign in page and sign in page but sign in page is, is sign in page storing that information somewhere yes uh, sign in page i want to store in sign in that data source means uh, there is table right ah uh, yes sir table sign in data table yeah, so we had a solution for it uh, anyone can help me out i think i i help someone if i add that. this uh, data it directly store in the sign in data table how to input text is map to table table means uh, yeah see, you, you you can use forms here right don't use input in uh, text here you you can use forms that in form that can, you can to take that. in that way we cannot achieve uh, so is, is it any uh, is there any possibility to input text uh, to map the table if i yeah. enter yeah yeah there are two ways one is you can use simply forms so form is the best way yes, you yes. don't need to configure anything another way is a patch function so a patch function is used when you want to input it to uh maybe as a new record or something uh with, without using forms if you want to input that data so like i'm share my screen okay i want to stop sharing okay i'm not using form here but i want to have this information username and password stored into my table so the first thing i want to do i would do is i will connect it to the data table so add data and i'll say the patch function no the user table and from here you will use users now i want to store that information as soon as i click on let's call this as sign in okay as soon as user enter user and name they sign in so what i will do is i'll add another formula here okay i'll remove this for now and i'll say patch patch will ask for a data source i'll say users then what record if there is an existing record that has to be updated or you have to create a new record i have to create a new record so i will say default default will create a new record and what item has to be updated so username i also need those kind of fields available so tables then user table columns new column username save but believe me forms are the best option patch is very tricky patch is a very tricky function now this is password and save okay let's refresh this so username this will be from text input to dot text and password will be from text input to and scroll dot text
okay then notify user created successfully do you get this formula patch this is the data source this is notifying which record has to be used if you want to create a new record then default user is the formula if you want to edit a record then record id has to be mentioned here okay then what has to be updated so i am updating username column and the password column perfect now if i store that username so before 1 2 3 4 5 5 and click on sign in this will create a new user id i hope it is making sense yes uh, and after that uh, when we log in that uh, in that login page after sign in then uh, that uh, login will be matched to the sign in that so then yesterday i i gave a solution for it anyone remember how did we do that how after saving it uh, you will have that information yes sir by using lookup lookup by using lookup lookup great yes yeah. by using lookup we could do that okay by using a lookup formula okay good any more questions all right perfect did you had tea coffee anything what do you like hey sir Tea, coffee, coffee sir. Anything? Okay. All right. We'll take a 15 minute break today. We have a two hours of session. We have yes, done sir. with 30 minutes. So we'll take a 15 minute break here, and then we will start with our new flow, new tool which is known as Power Automate. All right. But before we start Power Automate, I also want to give you some insights about Power Apps and all. So. Let's take a 15 minutes break. It is 5:01 here. We will be back by 5:20, 5:18. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Take a tea, coffee, and we'll be back. Okay, sir.
Okay, I'm back. Is everyone back? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So today, let's un understand few things. We have used a lot of application. We have created a lot of application. I'm going to share my screen. Go ahead with this is something that we are completing. So now we know working with tables, how we can use power apps and benefits from it. How how do we use text controls, input controls, media controls, galleries and forms? Those all things are known. Now let us learn about few things about setting and sharing an app. As soon as you have created an application. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Perfect. If there are any problem with this application, those error will come right over here in the app checker icon. So on the right corner, you will find that option. This will let you know if there are any errors that are available in your formulas or any any changes that you wanted to do into app. If they are runtime errors or runtime formula, such as internal email address. It says field internal email address is required. So that particular field is required for uh, for user to save, you know, for that record to be saved because that is an important field. So this is you telling you that that field is very much necessary. So I'll come here. I'll provide a text input. Now, what I would do is I'll use a formula which is user dot email, which means the, the user that has signed into this application that would come up. And uh, I will keep the display mode as only view. So this would be displayed. And here I will add that field. Once you are done with this application, you would probably save this app, right? So while you are saving this application, you will click on, click on the cloud and here is where you can name your application. Application one. And I'll save it. As soon as I save it, It will start creating a version history for this application. I'll click on see all version, which will take me to another tab. And here is where I see this application. I have version one here. Let's go. Let's just go back to the application and make other changes. When I save this application, this application is published. Published means available in the environment, but I have not shared this application with anyone. If I make any changes such as I delete this button. And make any changes to my application, some modification and save my application again. This will create an another version. So now if I go to see all version. I'll see that there are two versions now. One is the latest one, one is the version one. 
which which version would be available for users of my organization the version that is live so you see here there are two version one is the version without the button the version with button is live so i'll come back here and if my user will access this application do you know how people can access your applications how can you they use the use the apps that you create how will they consume your application guys my question is how will user consume who are going to consume this application so someone will use this data share the uh, users to the environment our environment user that are part of your environment right yes isn't it yes sir okay that also means user that belongs to my organization now what are the ways to consume this application these applications can be consumed on my web browser and it can also be consumed on my cell phone i'll publish this if i'll publish this version which means this version will be available to all users right now here i am into version history i can go to details and i can find the web link of an application this web link will be helpful for user to access my app so i'll click on this web link this is how user will access my application via a web link if they are accessing it on browser so you can see this app is in is is in a developer environment this is for development and test purposes only all right no worry so you can see that this is how they will access there is one more way they can access this application by using it on cell phone so on your cell phone install power auto power apps do you have power apps on your cell phones no sir all right so go ahead go to play store go to app store and install power apps install power apps and use credentials your trial credentials to log in
Okay, let me know once you install that application. After we install. Say that again. After installing, sir, uh, can I log in, sir? Yeah, yeah, log in using your trial account. Yes, sir, I log in, sir. Sir, here it's showing the apps which we made on the not before. Okay, use any of the app there. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. It's coming. The app is opening. In the okay. Can everyone see their app? Is there anyone who is having trouble? No, sir. Yes, sir. OK. Um, I'm not getting that link means in that application that was in my account. Link link for the application? No, not link, sir. That application. I modified, but that's not coming. Did you save it? Yes, sir. Um, it should come up. Uh, can you see it on here in the app section? App section? On, on your computer. Yeah, I'm, I'm saving it. Checking the all apps. Okay, I got it, sir. Because the most one is live. So how to change it? So this is how user will access your application. Now, when you go sir, to detail here, yeah. I'm just um, saying that uh, how to change that version. Which version I want to live. And suppose my version one is live. I want version 19 is to be live. So you would need to publish that version. Now, okay. 
you will come to virtual history and here you will click on restore after you restore the previous version you will make this version published from here okay sir selected Now, more importantly, you also would need to share this application between people that belong to your organization. So you need to come here into apps. We'll need to go to that application, right? Right over here, we, you need to select that application, and you need to click on share. From here, you can send this application to people that belong to your organization. If you want this application to available to everyone, then you will click on everyone in Vibor in your environment. Share and share. So this will be available to everyone in your organization. And until and unless you share it, people will not be able to access it. Is there any load capacity means uh, limit of uh, members we can add? Or uh, oh, there's no load capacity. You can share it with everyone. See, I'm sharing it with everyone, so everyone can access. One other important thing is you are using it in the developer environment. You will often want to move application from developer to the live or the production environment. In our case, we will consider it as a default environment. So how would you move it is you would export that application as a package. So right over here in application one, you have export package option. We'll click on export package. We'll give the package name. You will also define whether you are updating an existing application. So right over here in the review package content or you are creating a new application on the target environment. I am creating a new one. I'll click on save. And I'll click on export. As soon as you click on export, I did receive an error. Not sure why, but I should be able to download a package file. So you see there would be a zip file that would be downloaded. I can use this zip package file to import that application into any other environment. So I'll go here. I'll click on the apps. I'll click on import canvas app. Upload. Uh, 
the package is downloaded on my local file. Click on open. So it's giving me some internal error. I don't know why. Upload. OK. And this is how application can be moved from one environment to another. I'll click on import. It will start importing that application into this particular environment. Within few moments, that application will start reflecting right over here. So try this at your end. Export an application as a package. And move it from one environment to another. Let me know once you're done with that step. You can check, sir. Uh, can I share my screen, sir? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
been counted or internal or whatever you know like I'll be create an application with this name. Please specify a different name. Go to actions. Yeah. Yeah, click on actions. Okay. Cancel. Go back. Do cancel. Try again. Don't give the same name. No, why are you changing the environment? Environment name, don't, don't change any, anything else. Only give name. Cancel again, start again. Sir, one error is coming for me. This is encountered internal server error. For tracking. Yeah, that is coming. That came to me as well. Try again. You have already. You already have that application. How can it import another one? So now the uh, zip file is downloaded. Downloaded. Then what to do, sir? Change the environment and go to another environment and import. Okay. Sir, from the admin center, I will change the environment. No, right. Click on click above. On the environment where you see in power apps from there, you can change environment.
Are you doing it in the same environment? Yes, sir. You need to move to another environment, Sumit. Click on environment on the right upper corner. Go to Sumit Kumar. Yeah. Go to apps. And do uh, import it here. Sir, here import option is only for canvas app. Uh, only canvas app we can app, uh, import. Yes, that's right. This only works for canvas apps. We will learn about how we can move model driven apps. Yes, sir, it is imported, sir. Okay, great. Everyone try and please confirm if you can import and export. Sir, but in a <coughs> in my environment, sir, uh, like didn't so, sir. Uh, like it will come. It will take five minutes. It will come. Didn't come, sir. Hmm? I'm saying, sir, didn't come, sir. No, no, it will come. It will. It takes time, little bit, but it will surely oh. come. Okay, okay, sir.
Yes, sir. Okay. What about others? Were able, were others able to export and import? Yes, sir. But sir, it's not opening. Why? Yeah, yeah it's just buffering, buffering, buffering. Ah, uh, first time it will take time. Okay. And then for me, it's not coming yet. Okay, okay, it will take time. 